Hey, how's it going, guys? In today's video, we're going to be continuing our Leechess rapid rating climb. We're currently just over 1300 rating points, as you can see, and we're playing 10 minutes plus 5 second increment. I'm going to be talking you through my moves as I play, my thought process is behind them. Hopefully, you find it entertaining, you learn something, and if you do, please drop a like and subscribe to see my future uploads as I plan to continue releasing this series. So our opponent plays a Jabava London and normally in the King's Indian setup you go for like d6 bishop g7 castle and there's nothing wrong with that. I have recently been playing oh my god well d5 against the Jabava London in this setup just to get a good control over the e4 square because if we go bishop g7 now our opponent can play e4 he might not he might just play e3 anyway but i think we're just gonna let him do his thing get our setup he's gonna get his setup and then we're gonna see <clears throat> what prevails so yeah this is quite common just playing queen d2 the intention of playing bishop to h6, trading off the dark squared bishops, and also castling queenside, which is another result of moving the queen early on. Um, now we can play a move like h5 or h6 to stop bishop h6. Our rook would then be helping with the defense of the h6 square. So that's a possibility. Um, could go for like h6 g5, but that feels very weakening. We could just castle and allow the bishop trade, but I'd rather not. I'd rather not. I think we're going to play h5, and we're going to delay castling for now. We're going to go for like d6. Maybe not even d6. If he plays e4, we should play d6 to stop e5, uh, or at least make e5 a bit more difficult. But c6, b5 to start an attack on the queen side. So like I say, d6 means that e5 doesn't really work. And our opponent can't play bishop h6 now. So his plan isn't quite as obvious. Whereas I feel like we can castle at any time. And our king's in no danger in the center. He goes e5 anyway. Now we actually don't have to take this. Could play a move like knight d7 and threaten to win the pawn. Now we can take. If he takes with the pawn, then we can trade queens and play a move like knight g4. And we're probably going to win this pawn. If we take and he takes with the bishop, if we can play knight c6 probably. Attacking the bishop, and if bishop b5, pinning the knight, we can probably play bishop d7. Hmm, I think we can just take this. He plays bishop takes. So I said knight c6, but bishop b5 is annoying. So we could, we could play knight d7. We play knight d7. Let me think. If knight d7, the bishop moves back to f4. Then... Hmm, it's not obvious. The thing is with knight c6, if he moves to bishop, then d4 hangs. So that's nice. And if he allows us to take the bishop, then we're going to win the pawn back after this sequence of moves. The only problem is bishop b5 pinning the knight. If we go to d7, then bishop b5 can be met with c6, blocking the pin and attacking the bishop. But knight c6, bishop b5, bishop d7. He could trade. He might be threatening here ideas of knight to b5 
That's interesting. He might actually be threatening that in these lines, when the queens get traded and no longer defend c7. So c6, I think, is what I'm going to play. Just to stop anything coming to b5, bishop or knight, and then we can play knight d7. The, the, Lon the Jabava London is very dangerous. And I'll be really interested to check the analysis afterwards to see whether knight b5 was a threat. Because I think it was. I actually really do. So I'm glad I took my time there. F3 feels like it's wrong. My knight, I mean, stops my knight from going to g4. But the, the d5 square is also nice for it now anyway. We could even play bishop e6. I really like that move. Because it stops his bishop from going to c4. It targets a2, which can be weak when white castles. It looks like it's in the way. But we don't want to move this e-pawn anyway. Because we've got like a king's Indian setup. A lot of the time this e-pawn just sits on e7. So, and, and the reason that I wanted to play bishop e6 before knight d7 was because the knight on d7 will block the bishop in. And there's a good chance the knight just sits on d7 for a little bit. There's not really any other obvious squares for it to go to, because we've already got a knight on f6. The knight doesn't make that much sense on b6, unless there's already a bishop on e6 to try and fight for these light squares. Because, I mean, if the knight somehow maneuvers to d7, b6, c4, then it's very strong, because it's targeting some dark squares. This one has been weakened by the move f3 as well so obviously this is far in the future but it's worth considering the bishop on e6 is also good because it controls d5 okay if we take this knight he can't take our bishop because we're going to take his queen so if we take the knight and he takes back with the pawn like takes take takes, takes, then we can take the bishop, and then after pawn takes, his structure is horrible. We can then trade queens, and we're not, it's not obvious, but we are definitely winning. I think we're going to do it. I think his idea was that he's going to take the bishop and attack the rook, but his queen just hangs. So we're going to do this. Now we don't have to trade the queens. We could play queen b6. Or c7. Okay, he just doesn't take our bishop. That is... What? I don't understand. I mean, sure, he's got to mess up his pawn structure, but... Doubled isolated pawns is better than being a piece down. That um, seems obvious. And he blunders again to bishop h6, pinning the queen to the king. With his f pawn gone as well, there's no ideas of f4 to block the diagonal. His only move will be knight to g4. Now, if we play f6, adding an attacker to the knight, white can actually take our bishop on e6. But his queen gets taken with check. So even though our queen's under attack, his queen is getting taken with check. So it's so we're we're fine to play f6 here. Also worth noting, there's no no possible checks on our king. You know, anything from the front or both diagonals is blocked because of the way our pawns are. So we don't have to worry about any tactics. Okay, defense with the H pawn, but we take it anyway. And then just drop our bishop back. And I mean, we're up two pieces for a pawn now. This is very easy to convert. 
no one should be having a problem with this, especially considering how strong our bishops are. A2 is weak. Um, we could castle, but... I'm going to play knight a6, because I want to go to c7, just to defend the d5 square, because our opponent's got strong pawns, and if he takes it, I'm very happy. Because, I mean, I've ruined my pawn structure, sure, but I've got white's last remaining minor piece off the board. Now there's no real danger, because we have the only minor pieces left, which is a bishop pair. Right, it's it's a bishop. That move also doesn't make sense, really, because the deep the deep one was already very strong, but in doing this, he's just weakened his light squares. We're gonna play the queen up to d5 to threaten mate. We're also pressuring the g2 pawn. We probably wouldn't take it even if we could, but it's worth noting. B3 makes the most sense to block the diagonal. Apparently our opponent doesn't want to do that. But if we take on a2, the king moves. We go to a1. The king goes to b2. And we're going to have to play queen a4 to defend c6. But after rook a1, it's kind of annoying. We could just play the simple queen to c4. And offer a queen trade. Which I think we're going to play. I think that's... I mean, we could probably take on an a2. And then come back. To be fair. That's probably better. But this is also fine. I mean, look, we're up two pieces. So all we need to do is get the queens off the board. And then there's no danger. Right? That's the priority here. We don't need, to, unless there's an obvious checkmate, which there isn't. Chasing the king to the center of the board, in theory, is nice. We're going to exchange queens. In theory, is nice, but it isn't. It, it, it provides white some counterplay. So here, we're just going to defend our position. Our bishop is unassailable. The only way to do that would be to play c4 can't do that. We don't care about this pawn. We're just going to castle. White can have it. And let's... How are we going to do this? Yeah, okay. I think rook here. Double the rooks, probably. Even if we give up this pawn, it's not a big deal. Although I'd rather not, just because it gives black, sorry, white, a passed pawn. I'd actually like to get my king up. And just use my king to eat up the pawns. I think that's actually a really effective strategy. Because this way we don't give white anything. We control the only open file, which he can't contest. And, I mean, if he goes something like rook here, then here, then there, to contest it, he wastes a bunch of time, and we trade a pair of rooks. And this rook can come to f8 anyway, because it's defended by the bishop. I think we can just put our king on g4 and pressure this pawn. Might not be the most efficient way of winning this, but I think it's the safest way. Because our bishop's kind of struggling to get into the game. Like, as much as I mocked this pawn wedge earlier, it is keeping our bishop out the game for now. But playing this little king maneuver does allow our bishop to get onto this diagonal now. Also allows us to create a passed pawn. Okay, here we're just going to go e6 to stop anything from happening. I mean, it's not like white was threatening anything anyway, but just for good measure. Just for good measure, 
We'll keep it easy. And yet, king g4 stops any g4 moves. There's no rook attacks because our bishop controls the square. c4, if it was played, we can just move our bishop to f3. We're going to attack the rook, get our bishop into the game. Let's double up. And then we're going to play rook b2 and rook f to d to f2 to attack this pawn. And once he defends, we're going to play bishop to e4 and he won't have the ability to add any more defenders. And we're going to win the pawn. And we're going to take all his pieces. And we're going to win. After rook c1, we can also play bishop to e3 so that we win this pawn. And white is almost checkmated. Almost. Okay, well, we're going to take this then. White king is going to have to go for a bit of a walk. Bit of a walk. And then we're going to play bishop e2. Or he can go there, but that's checkmate, because our bishops cover these squares. There we go. That is now 1330 Lee Chess rating. Very clean game against the London. Um, the computer does like the d5 idea, says it's equal, but... Okay, h4 wasn't good. It really wants d5. But d5, bishop h6. I was just worried about ideas like h4, but the computer tells me not to worry and just go c5. And if he takes, then we just thrust into the center. Castles pins the pawn. But knight c6, knight's got a trick. Okay, okay. London theory is weird. But e4, d6, e5 is just not a good move. Here, what does the computer want? It doesn't mind c6. And it does like bishop e6. That's a good square for the bishop. Here taking. And the plan here was to do this and attack the knight and there's no real way for white to continue defending the pawn so we're just going to be a clean pawn up so the reason i played c6 i think i was worried about knight d7 no wait what was it that I was worried about? It was like knight c6, bishop to b5, bishop d7. I wasn't really convinced. It looks kind of scary. But maybe it's okay. Maybe it's alright. But yeah, it was a very clean game. White just gave us a piece for whatever reason. Then blunders another. Um, like, knight a6 is a good move, just getting the rest of the pieces off. Here, we should have taken, but we secure a queen trade nonetheless. And I wonder if the computer likes my king walk plan. Let's see. <laughs> it wants me to put it... That's quite funny, it just wants it back on g8. But here, here it's happy to keep it going. Um, but it doesn't matter. Like, once we go two pieces up, we're two pieces up. But that gets us some more rating points, and we'll continue the climb to 2000 in the next one.